What's good, Bully World? This is Zeb, your host, Bully Talk with Zeb Pitts. And today we're down here in Virginia Beach at the Potter House. Got a chance uh, today to chop it up with my man, Antonio McClinney. What's good, man? What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? I appreciate uh, uh, Zeb Pitts, man, uh, coming to Virginia Beach, especially to the Potter's House, man. It's always a, a good thing. Man, it's an honor, man. I, I'm going to jump right into it, man. We're going to talk about the accomplishments of that boy, the real Rick Ross. Okay. Let's, let's do the rundown on him. He's an ABKC Grand Champion. He's an RKC Grand Champion. He's a CBR Champion, which uh, 55 points away from becoming an IBKC Champion. Yes, sir. Let's run down the stats of him. He's a uh, height 21 and a half inches tall, 141 pounds, 26 inch head. Definitely, he's an XL. 18 best in shows, 21 best in breeds. Let's let's do the rundown and of we, the and we and we made it we made it uh 22 this weekend this past weekend. 22 this past weekend uh at that RKC show. Yes sir. Um he is let's do the awards breakdown for him. Uh ABKC like a, ABKC grand champion like I said, four best in shows, six best in breeds, five best champions, five champion class reserve. Three best of winners, seven best XL, 2013 number one XL in the country, 2013 tied for five for fifth overall bully in the country. In the RKC, he's the RKC Grand Champion, eight best in show wins, eight best of breed, six best of grand champions, five best of champions, two champion reserves, six best overall XL, six best XL. 2014 number one XL in the country. 2014 number one overall bully in the country. 2014 best national grand champion winner in the IBKC. Three best in show. Three best of breed. Three best of variety. Six best overall XL. Six best XL male. 55 points remaining for the IBKC championship status. In the CBR. CBR champion. Three best in show. Four best of breed. One champion class reserve, four best of winners, four best overall XL, four best XL male. Now my question is, what keeps you motivated to, to put that boy out there in all the different registries, man? Um, I feel like he has what it takes to win, and um, and uh, I think it was uh, it was more than a tall order to 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 show an ABKC and and to compete in ABKC and, and win, but to but to hit grand champion status in ABKC was uh, that was Mount Everest. That was that was the pinnacle. Um, but he did it at such a I would say young age for an XL. Um, you know, I felt like he was only going to get better with time, and so you know, I, I decided to, to venture into the RKC, into the IBKC, and CBR, and. Um, and show that he can do it in, in every registry, um, you know, while along bringing bringing on some of my other younger XLs uh, along with along with me. But um, but he's always been my um, my headliner since I started. So speaking on the XL class in the different registries, do you feel they get their proper due per se? as compared to like the standard class or, or the pocket class? Um, I, I would have to say yes. Um, I would have to say yes. And I know a lot of people say, um, you know, he's just saying that because of all that he's done. Um, but, you know, you understand that you understand the challenges that that await you um, when you decide to when you decide to choose an XL as your as your class of dog or your your class of uh, of a bu of bully, and um, you understand that it's uh, very few dogs have become an XL Grand Champion. Um, I would probably say it has its, it has its, its ups and its downs, its pros and its cons. Um, I think becoming an XL Champion is, uh, in my opinion, is pretty easy um, because the standard class. It's harder to become a standard champion or a pocket champion because of so much competition. As far as the XL class, um, it's it's not a lot of competition. It's not a lot of people that are willing to show the XL. Um, so I think you know eventually 
as long as you show enough and your dog is on point, um, I think it's possible to become an XL champion. Um, and I think it's pretty easy to do it. Um, but, you know, to become an XL grand champion, now you're forced to, uh, to get in the champion class and, can, and compete against all classes of the American bully. And, um, you know. You know, speaking, speaking on that, I, I just left a show this past weekend up in Maryland. And I, I ran into someone who deals with the XLs. Why do you think it's, it's a lot of XL breeders don't really show in the ring? Um, I think they get discouraged. I think, um, in my honest opinion, man, I think they quit too soon. I think they, um, I think every, every opportunity, every time you get in the ring, is an opportunity for you to learn um, from your mistakes and learn from yourself. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times, man, it's not, a, it's not about your competition. It's about you. It's about you going out there and your dog going out there and you guys presenting the best picture possible. And, um, but I, I just think they quit too soon. If, if they would just stay consistent and persistent, um, um, you know, get tips from the right people. Because there are people out here that can show you. Um, I've been taught by a lot of people, and they didn't even realize they were teaching me, you know. But, and, and you know, I would watch what they're doing and, um, you know, look at the judges. See how they're judging. See what they like, what they don't like. See what type of dogs they're picking and what type of dogs they're not picking. Um, you know, so I, I, think, uh, I think all of your answers are right in front of your face. I think you just have to take the time to, uh, to read the book. And, um, in your heart of hearts, do you think you will ever see a XL win uh, Nationals uh, Best in Show? Could you see that in your lifetime? I can. I can see it in my lifetime. Um, I can see it in my lifetime. I, I, it's coming. It's coming. Um, and I'm not saying it, um, you know, because I think it'll be me. Um, but I think... Uh, the right dog with the right handler um, that put in the right kind of work is definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Um, in one of these registries out here, it's definitely possible. I, I don't. Uh, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. You know, for a lot of people that that might be new to Bully Talk Zed Pits, we did an interview a couple of years ago on Blog Talk Radio, uh, okay. Bully Talk Zed Pits. For the new viewers out there who might not know about that interview, what what made you get into the XL breed? Um, the thing that made me get into the XL breed, um, I went to a show, uh, a bully show in Atlanta, and um, and I saw um, Gotti Lines uh, Legend, and he blew me away. I mean, he blew me away, and so um, you know that was. That was that was my pinnacle of dog, and then you know over the years and getting to see um, bigger, girthier dogs. Um, you know, I'm a fan of Ichiban, um, although Ichiban is not an XL dog. Um, you know, just um, seeing his videos and seeing how he moves and the structure, um, just the size and the girth and the power and his steps. You know, it it, it speaks loud and clear. Um, and then I'm also I'm a firm believer that you know. Although I like to show my dogs, my dogs have a job to do. And um, I got a wife, and I have uh, a son and a daughter. And um, ultimately, when I'm not here, it's their job to, uh, to protect this house. And so, you know, that's it. Speaking of Ichiban, um, like you said, he's not an XL. But how has that, um, as far as incorporating that into your XL program, have you done that yet? I have. I have. And um, what has the results been with that? Um, when I was, um, I was a part of, when I first started, I was a part of um, a group, uh, Maximus Prime. And um, in, over, with the years with them, um, we decided to incorporate Ichiban because of his structure and, um, and the things that he, the qualities that he brought. Um, so, we really like, uh, Rick Ross, and we love um, his structure. We loved everything about him, but we wanted to try to make um, a little shorter version of Ross with a 
shorter back um, with more muscle, the same amount of bone and girth. And so we took Ross's mother to Ichiban um, with um, uh, Benny Chavez and Ed Shepard out of California and uh, my, my partners, uh, Chris Mitchell and Susan Mitchell, um, we came together and we, uh, we collaborated with them and we did the breeding and uh, we produced um, champion Yokozuna. And, um, and I have him and, uh, and he's doing well. I mean, he, he's, he is exactly what we, what we envision. Um, he's about an inch and a half shorter than Ross. He's right at 20 inches. Um, his back is shorter than Ross. Um, but he has just as much bone. He's probably a little girthier, um, more muscle tone. Um, he's a well put together dog, you know. So it was. Uh, I would probably say it was just. A, it was a calculated move. It was strategic, and uh, we took the time to plan it out. You know, it wasn't um, instead of swinging on. You know, instead of swinging the axe, you know, for six hours trying to chop down the tree. You know, we. I think I felt like we sharpened the blade for three hours and we swung on the tree for. 30 minutes because it was it was strategic it was calculated and it, and it worked now I want to talk about what keeps you motivated in the XL class where well, you see a lot of breeders right now they you know what's going on with China they buying a lot of exotics right now okay for big dollars at that mm -hmm. is that is that how, is that frustrating to you in a way when you see certain structured dogs that you like? How are they paying that much money for a certain dog that you know health wise mm -hmm. is 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 not legit and, and you know you have something that can sustain for years to come, but yet you see the market has opened up to to certain dogs that that might not make it past five years. Um, it's not frustrating for me, um, although, you know, I'll get the, I get this question a lot. It's not frustrating at all. Um, um, I feel like I stay consistent, you know, over the years. Um, I stay consistent when we when we um, when we first got into it, and when I first got into it, I I um, I was with the XL. Um, I came up with a game plan and I stuck to it, um, and. Through the years, I've been able to find success, regardless. When um, when the pocket was the big thing, I was successful. When the XL was the big thing, I'm, I was successful. Standard, so on and so forth. Now it's exotic. I'm still successful. Um, I think um, I think it's frustrating for some new people when they first, you know, coming in because um, because they hear about all the good and they hear about all the pros, but you know rarely do people take the time to give them the, the cons and the and the downfalls and the pitfalls and the things that you're going to face along the way um, so they come in seeing this uh, what they would call a gold mine and then they realize that uh, that they, they're probably on a gold mine but uh, but most people don't know what diamonds look like um, in its original form um, and so for me um, as far as the money um, my goal it's, is, it's big money. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. It is. Um, Does that tempt you to sometimes to like maybe I want to dabble a little bit exotic? Um, not really. No, I I, I don't. I, I I don't knock it. I don't knock it at all. In fact, I mean, I see some of them. And I'm like, man, that's a nice looking dog, you know. Um, and then I see some, and I'm you know I might cock my head to the side like yeah. ah, but you know if somebody asks me my opinion about, it, I just say you know it's just not my style of dog. No knock to this man. Mm -hmm. Um, if he's doing well, um and um. Financially, it's paying off for him, man. You know, salute to him, kudos to him, man. I, I'm, um, I'm happy for him. Um, but for me, um, I think when you start chasing the money, if you just, I, I've always stayed focused on just making a great product, um, um, presenting a great product, not just my dog, but myself. Um, you know, my dog, my dogs are my product, but I am my product. I am my brand. And, and so, um, you know, being mentored by, some, by the right people and, uh, and understanding that, uh, you know, if you chase the money, the money will never get tired of running from you. But uh, if you take the time to make yourself more attractive to money, you can stop running and it'll come to you. And, um, and I would say just over the, over the years of being consistent and being persistent, um, 
and not chasing the money and focusing on making myself more attractive to it. Um, I'm comfortable in my own lane and uh, I, I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable That's in my own lane in, in every aspect, in the show ring, um, financially, um, um, I don't, I don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Let's let's talk about people who are interested in getting your uh, style of pups. Okay. What 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 is the criteria when you're looking for a home for your for your particular pups, man? Right? For me, um, in all honesty, man, most of my most of my clients are everyday family people. You know, they're they're everyday family people. The the husbands and the wives that um, that get up and um, go to work every day, whether they're you know a doctor or a lawyer to um, a farmer, a cook, um, a homemaker. I mean, I have clients that that do it all, um, and and from in all walks of life. You know, from the Virginia to the. Carolinas to Midwest, California, Texas, you know, as far as Alaska and Canada, um, I have a few clients from Iran, you know, but oh, wow. it's, um, it's the, the, my main criteria is, you know, be a good person, take care of your product, um, and at my price point, um, typically, they're going to take care of their product. So that's what that's what I would say. It's not a lot of people willing to to throw away, um, to throw away a certain amount of money. Um, so you know I, I don't um, I don't price them so high to where you know I it, it I think I weed out my price point weeds out um, you know people who, who probably wouldn't take care of the take care of the dog. So um, most of my clients are. Um, I just family, everyday people. I do have a few um, breeders that contact me, but um, most of those contacts are, you know, private messages and phone calls and text messages. And uh, you know. are they basically just trying to trying to get a gauge on what you're selling your pups for? That and um, and and they have been called and they have become clients of mine. Oh wow! You okay. know, and so um, and I think that's uh. Um, that's been a good gauge for me to see that I'm that I'm doing it the right way and that I'm doing well um, I'm in it. You know, when you have XL breeders uh, contacting you for your product um, to incorporate it into their into their program, um, so um, it's, it's been a it's been a great gauge for me. So I feel like I'm on the right track. What What was the XL dog that just that that made you say, "Wow, I, I got to get into this." It, it was legend. Legend. It was legend. It, it was. Um, he didn't. Um, he didn't show as well as I. Um, he didn't show as well as I would have liked to see him show. Um, but at that time, I was so new and didn't really know a whole lot. So, you know, I felt like, all right, well, you know, he's a big dog. He. This is what he does. This is what they require of him. You know, and and over the years of learning and um, and being around it. Um, hindsight being what it is, he didn't show as well as I would have liked for him to show. But as far as the the picture that he presented and um, the qualities that that uh, that he had, um, he was the dog for me. Um, yeah, I would have to say legend for sure. I, I gotta ask, you know, you know, on different radio shows or broadcasts or podcasts, you know, a lot of the older breeders in the American bully world saying, you know, the the bully is going backwards. It's, it's, it's not living up to par of the past dogs as the Hefts or the King Kamali's or, or the Smokies, uh, Blue Kennel Smokey yes. or uh, uh, King Lions. Well, what, what is your thoughts on that? Because I, 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 my honest opinion is I would have to disagree. Because I, I, I've seen going out to different shows the progress of the American Bully. And, and I mean, of course, you got bad breeders, but at the same time, you have breeders who are evolving and taking the breed to, to the next level. Yes. Um, well, I think in, in, uh, 
in anything, change change will be uh, change is uncomfortable, whether it's good or or it's bad. Um, and um, you know, just like in society, you know, the things that took place in the '50s didn't take place in the '70s, and you know, in the '90s and the 2000s, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, you're either getting better, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You know, it's no staying the same. You know, so if if they're if if at if now or at this point they feel like um, um, you know they would have liked for it to stay the same you know that's that's not possible um, you can't ask and invite new people into this uh, into this um, this game that we call and uh, and expect for their opinions um, and their way of thinking to be the same it's not um, for me personally in, in my program um, you got to have numbers and data to back up what you say um, if anybody can make a statement it's just anybody can make a statement but if you do not have numbers and data to back up what you're saying it's just an opinion and so for me in my program the Potter's House and Rick Ross um, I can make a statement about Ross and my program, and then I can show you the numbers to back up what I'm saying, my statement. And so, you know, therefore it makes it valid. So, that's it. What, what's some of the upcoming shows you plan on taking uh, some of your production out to? Um, so, I'm actually finishing up with Ross. Um, we're, um, he's a champion in the CBR, so um, he needs uh, five five more champion class wins and he'll be a CBR grand champion at that point he will retire from the show ring um, and um, he has a sister named uh, Rhonda Rousey and she is in my opinion a very nice female um, she was produced um, by uh, Maximus Prime my, old, my partners uh, my old partners and um, you know, I feel like she, she'll be the next um, nice female um, out there showing in the XL class. Um, I showed her for the first time this past weekend in the RKC show. Um, she picked up a couple majors, and I'm, you know, beyond happy about that. So I'll be going to um, a CBR show at the end of the month. Um, I've been asked to do a, it's a, a bully meet and greet. Um, I think they're working on making it a show. Um, possibly um, in Maryland, Eastern Shore um, region. And so um, I've been asked to come out there and um, it's supposed to be a community event. Um, you know, teach some handling, teach some um, like ring etiquette and things like that. And um, in a sense, pay forward what was taught to me. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I'm gonna hit some ABKC shows now, now, will you be at that one down uh, Fredericksburg, the one hosted by uh, Dave and the ABKC? Back I, to plan, the I plan to. I plan to. I've actually, um, I showed in that, um, I showed in uh, in that show uh, a couple years ago. Um, I think his uh, last name Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, I think he. he Sean, yeah. yeah, Sean Jackson. So he hosted it, and I showed in this show a couple years ago. Um, uh, I think maybe two or three years ago with Ross and. Um, and this was before he became a, a grand champion. He was a, um, a champion. And um, we picked up a reserve. I think we got a couple of reserves that day. Um, so I plan to. I plan to. Um, man, I, I just want to go and compete. It doesn't matter. You know, ABKC, man, I thank them for the platform. RKC, you know, the same thing. CBR, IBKC. Um, you know, I don't, I don't frown on any registry. I don't. I just want to go and compete. You know, I feel like I have XLs that can compete at any registry, and um, I have XLs that I feel like can compete um, against any class of bully. And um, that's it. If they can't compete, I need to, I need to get better. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot again, but I'm gonna ask you the question again, man. Okay. Uh, ha, 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 has the call come from any registry yet, man, for that uh, to be a judge? Um, it has. Uh, it has. Um, I've I've had a um, I've had a few. Um, I've had I've had two. I've had two. Um, and 
I would say there is a registry uh, right now that I'm um, that I'm interested in um, in the future at possibly becoming a judge. Um, but when they when it was presented to me and um, you know when he asked me um, would it be something I would consider or would, or would want to do um, at that time, um, you know I just. I didn't feel like it was a good time, and uh, and just in my personal opinion, um, I want to be able to reach the pinnacle of that registry first um, before I judge dogs on on reaching the pinnacle. You know, I, I want to be able to say, all right, I know what it's like to get there because I've done it, not only in this registry um, but in Multiple other registries, registries. and so. Um, I just I want I want I want to make sure that my credentials are 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 right. Um, I would probably say um, after um, Ross retires, you know, I'll probably end up giving that that guy a call back and uh, and asking him, um, you know, does that opportunity, you know, still exist for me? And uh, and if he says yeah, you know, yes, then uh, then then. Maybe so. Then maybe you know. Maybe I, I will. I, I will. Well, it, 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 it's something that I would probably like to do. Well, sure. well, well, let me ask you, man. What, what are some of your personal goals that you want to accomplish in uh, the American bully world? Um, I wanted to make Ross the the most decorated XL of all time. Um, in the last thirty plus years of the American bully, um, in every registry, um, and. And although we're not finished, um, I feel like he's done that. Um, when when we talk numbers, um, there's no XL um, in in the history that has posted his numbers. Um, and and after that's done, I want to be able to do it again because I want them to. I want the public and I want the bully world to understand that uh, that it wasn't a fluke and that. Um, and if you're consistent and you have the right ingredients, um, it's not impossible to do it again. So, um, you know, I, I think I got, I know I have the concoction and the ingredients to, to remake it and do it again. But I don't want to, you know, a lot of people ask me, man, do you want to make another Ross? My plan is to never make Ross again. My plan is to always be better than him. Um, that's my mindset. You either getting better or you getting worse. There's no staying the same. So I don't want him him again. It would be good, but uh, I think it would be easier if I could make a better version of him. You know, um, it would make it easier for me to compete um, against the other classes of, of American bully, not just not just the XL. So, how how close are you to accomplishing that goal? Um, what as far as getting that that look that you're looking for as far as bettering what you perceive in Rick Ross that better look like okay uh, this this is this what I can take in the ring next um how close am I um I have the ingredients in my behind my fence right now I race on everything um I don't want to compete against myself so that's why I'm not in a hurry, um, and and I need to make sure that my my products have a name for themselves. You know, um, not just riding on my coattail and what I've done in the ring, or not just riding on Ross's accomplishments. You know, um, his sister Ronda Rousey. I I don't want her to. I don't want to have to pre always present her as, oh, this is Grand Champion Rick Ross's sister. I want her to have her own um, identity. Her own identity, and and this is um, champion, or even maybe um, grand champion um, Ronda Rousey, the sister of XL Grand Champion Rick Ross. You know, I want her to have her own identity, and so um, once we do that, um, and and I'm done showing her, then. Uh, so with, with that Ross. philosophy in mind, I, I would imagine that would probably be the same as with the kids as well. 
that you don't want them to. Oh, this is grand champion Rick Rosen. This no, this is such and such. Yes, standing yes. on his own. Yes, marriage. and and I would probably say, um, um, I've sold a few. I've sold a few dogs to um, a few young guys that are you know in the game and and um, and I think they'll do well. But I think they're um, they were chasing their name fast and trying to chase the money fast and and so how they presented um their puppies and how they presented their dog and how they presented their breeding um it was you know ross this and ross that and you know instead of me getting on the post and um and saying something on the post you know i, I called him and um explained to him how he should do it and um and, and that is not the the right way to do it. Um, it's not the professional way to do it, um, especially without uh, my permission. Um, and um, and this is how I would recommend that you do it. Um, is that hard in the era of Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, where because of the the, the media market that we have now, that people see people posting up money, and we like. Look how much I made off this dog. That you get people coming in just just for that reason alone, and not really for the love of the dog. And hey, my sole purpose is 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 to make money off these dogs. And and, and, and I bring it up because I did an interview with Bashad. Okay. And and he straight up said, "Hey, I, I'm into it for the money. It's, it's not about no love of the dog. I, it's it's about the money." Mm -hmm. How, how is that hurting or helping, in your opinion, the breed when it comes to your product? When when people come to you for a dog, it doesn't hurt my it doesn't hurt my product or my or my brand or um, or what he does and how he does it. Um, it doesn't affect me. You know, I I feel like I have uh, so much to work on in my own program that. I don't really care too much what other people do, and and that may that may be bad, you know. But um, you know, for me, I just I want to be able to show people that that I produce a superior XL product that can compete um, against all classes of bully, and I chase the shows in every registry because I want to be able to prove it, and I think improving that. I mean, it brings the other things. Have you ever that got that call? With ha, it. Have you ever got the call from China yet? I are they are they in, are they in the XL? Um, I would probably say so. Um, I've gotten a few messages. I have. I've gotten a few messages. Um, um, asking about um, prices and um, and asking about Ross. To be honest with you, um, um, a lot in the Philippines. And um, and they're interested in Ross and Yoko, and um, and so I, I mean I, I'm uh, I'm 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 happy that I, I can say that um, um that my product is out of the country, and um, and I and I feel like uh, it'll continue, you know I just uh, now I haven't got that forty thousand fifty thousand hundred thousand dollar price tag on any of them yet. Um, but good question. Okay, you know, let me ask you this. Okay, <laughs> that call ever came through for 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 the real Rick Rolls? Is there a number that 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 would have him leave the Potter House? No number. Wow. No number. No number. Like ain't even. Um, Not even a question. No number. Like that. That. Uh, he's uh, he's more than a dog to me. Um, He's, he's more than a dog to me. We've uh, we've been through a lot. We've um, chasing this goal um, that I set for both of us, um, and um, and in a sense, it. it um, I hear people, you know, they'll laugh and joke every now and then. They're like, "Man, he's the dog whisperer. He's the dog whisperer." And they, but uh, in a sense, I say, um, you know, in the process of chasing this goal that I set for for us, um, I think he's uh, bought into it. Um, um, he aims to please me, 
and um, and uh, about three years ago, um, we were three or four years ago, we were on our way back. Three, like three and a half years ago, we were on our way back from a show in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, it was myself, um, uh, Benjamin Bassett, and um, and um, my cousin Gerard Wilson, and we went to a show. And um, on the way back, we had got caught in a snowstorm. Everybody's tired, but we had been up for, you know, going on 72 hours straight, and um, fell asleep. And when we woke up, we were upside down in water, you know. And so um, the dogs in the truck, um, you know, we hit a pole, a ditch, a tree, a, a electrical box. And uh, but when we woke up, man, we were upside down in water. And and so when we, all the dogs live, we were all safe. I probably say the only thing that was scarred and hurt on us was I was our pride more so um, for me because I was the I was the driver and um, and and I fell asleep and um, you know and so when I get in when we get in the ring um, when when it's time for us to do our thing when we train when it's time for us to compete at any show at any registry you got to understand that. We chase this thing so hard that that we were willing to risk it all, you know, including trying to stay up for 72 hours straight and falling asleep and all, almost killing myself, trying to chase this goal. Um, so you just gotta understand what you're facing when you when you get in the ring against us. Um, I'm not saying that I'm always gonna win because I'm not, and I've I've lost many times, but uh, but it's not gonna be easy to beat us because. I'm willing to give what I got to get this one, and, um, and it's not a lot of people willing to say that. So that's that's real tough right there. And um, for a lot of people that don't know, man, you're you're a mentor of young men, man, and um, you're actually uh, a coach on the football team. I am. Talk talk about uh, that experience and and molding young minds right now. I know it's, I know it's not dog related, mm. but it's just. Just to give people an idea of who you are and what they're dealing with when they come to you about dog. Um, I am a um, I'm the I'm a football coach. I'm the uh, defensive coordinator and uh, linebackers coach at um, uh, Bishop Sullivan Catholic High School in Virginia Beach. And um, man, big shout out to my boys at uh, Sullivan, man. Um, and as far as you know, molding players and and. Um, mentoring players and not just players but just young people in general um, it's necessary you know it's it's something that people don't um, I don't I don't think people take enough time and um, and take enough pride in it um, but for me um, you know my coaches were a, a major part of you know who I am now um, and you know teaching me to over overcome obstacles and teaching me to work through the pain and um, and using pain to, to as motivation and using pain as fuel to to, uh, to accomplish your goal um, in the classroom and and on the field um, and so for me you know it's more than just more than just football players um, you know I want to our, our goal um, as as a staff and, and and my personal goal, you know, we want to use football to to teach life lessons, to prepare these young men for life. You know, football is uh, is a great thing because it can it it can help put them in position where um, where they can earn a free education. But uh, but eventually you'll get older. Eventually you're going to slow down. You're not going to be as big or not going to be as strong um, and not going to be as sharp physically. Um, but if I can use football to teach you some lessons that are that's going to be able to take you and carry you um, for the rest of your life, um, but even more so, um, make it a part of your character so that you can you can pass it on to somebody else. Um, I think ultimately that's the goal, you know, to to uh, to mold young men a certain way so that it's a part of their character, it's a part of who they are. And uh, and they and they naturally pass it on. Um, 
to other people that are either younger or the same age or even older, you know. Um, so I, I, that's what I do. So when you come to me to uh, to either purchase a puppy or to um, get tips on how to handle your dog, um, you're getting more than just a person who, who does dogs. You know, I'm I, I am. Um, showing dogs and training dogs that's just something that I enjoy doing but it's not who I am not who you know you it's not who I am um, there there are other things there are other titles that come before dog man and breeder or or dog handler you know there are there are definitely other titles that come before that that mean a whole a whole lot more to me you know um, child of God you know being a father um, you know being a son being a husband um, those titles to me um, are everything to me and and those titles help make me a um, a great coach and a great dog handler or dog trainer um, those those titles are what are my motivation I, I'm gonna ask you man you know just give people who might be down and out and going through things what's one of the toughest things that you had to deal with and, and how did you overcome it um, I would say, um, um, you know, when my mom and my dad uh, got a divorce and, you know, not seeing them for, you know, 10 years of my life, um, I would probably say that was, that was tough. Um, you know, my mom remarried and, and, um, and married a great guy. And, and and he's dad, you know. He he took care of me like he was, you know, like he was the guy that, that made me, and uh, and I love him to death for that. Um, but um, in the back of my mind, you know, it's always tough knowing that, um, you know, the guy who who helped make you. Um, didn't honor the craft, you know, didn't honor that title of being dad and father. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think people, they take it for granted, you know, um, the effect that it can have on a young person's, on a person life. And, um, you know, no matter how old they are, you know, fortunately for me now, you know, I was raised by a strong mother and a strong father and they, um, they instill some things in me. Um, and so now, you know, I use that, that tough obstacle that was hard for me to overcome, you know, growing up. Um, I use that now and I, you know, I talk to young people that may be going through the same thing. And, um, you know, I can, in a sense, coach them through it. Um, and give them some uh, some tips and some maybe some strategies that I use to uh, to uh, to help me get past it. And so um, that's that's it, you know. But yeah, that was uh, growing up without my biological father for for at least ten years of my life, man. It was uh, that's tough. It was tough. Yeah, that 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 can that can be really tough for a young man. Um, like myself, I. Uh was raised by my mother, um, lost my father to, I'll just say it, I lost him to suicide. Uh, as a result, he was a Vietnam vet and was diagnosed with uh, schizophrenia. So he had to deal with that a lot, in and out of VA hospitals. And just for someone like you who's a mentor of young men, to, to give that life lesson of, hey, this is my experience of what I went through. You, you're not alone going through that situation. And I, I think that's a great thing um, for someone, because you probably see that probably, what, six out of, six out of ten um, on, that, on that team, probably without a father? I would, I would um, probably about half. Half, about half. Probably, yeah, probably about half. half. The, um, the great part about it is, um, you know, whether it's their 
biological father or not um, um, all of them the one thing I can say that all of them do have are um, influential men, men in, um, their in, their, in their life in their life um, whether whether it be their you know the father or or, um, or stepfather or you know uncle or brother um, so all of them have strong men um, in their lives um, along with their coaches um, that that you know that's there to push them and to motivate them and to and to teach them so yeah. looking at that gate right there the Potter house what was the inspiration behind the name the Potter's house man um, I feel like every I think um, I feel like everything can be molded and, and shaped um, you know and of course you know um, the biblical uh, meaning behind it, you know how you know God made us in His image, and um, and He and He He molded us, and so for me, um, I feel like uh, that's He blessed me with a gift to be able to do that with an animal, um, to be able to um, to be able to see the fit, to be able to see the the product finish in advance, to be able to see it um, without even seeing it. You know, um, at times I'll say, you know, sight beyond sight, or um, I can see things that you can't see. And, you know, some people say, well, man, he's, yeah, right, he's just trying to make himself sound more than what it is. But I think in anything in life, in everything you do in life, man, you have to be able, you, you have to be able to see the end first you have to be able to see the end product first and uh, I feel like I can do that with the animal um, with the dog with the American bully um, in particular so um, that was the inspiration behind the potter's house you know me being able to mold the dog and um, and then the Muhammad Ali um, quote um, when I first started my goal was just to earn a ribbon just to I just wanted one gold ribbon a third place. It wasn't even a goal to have a first place. I wanted one third place ribbon. Um, the only third place ribbon I have, my daughter, Show Ross. That ribbon means more to me than any ribbon I have. And 98% of the ribbons that I have are blue. Um, so, um, so with Muhammad Ali, um, you know, I'm the greatest. I, I said that even before I knew I was. I got rid of every dog that I had when I got Ross. And, every, and they told me, everybody told me I was crazy. Man, you're crazy. Like, look at him. He's he not what you think he's going to be. He's just not. He's not going to be big enough. He not going. His head's not going to pop. His muzzle's too long. Um, he's, he's too leggy. He do, he's not. He doesn't have enough girth. Um, man, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Did they're you my, ever? They're did my you ever get, now. Did you ever get nervous and have doubts that he wasn't going to turn out the way he did? That that you expected. And be such an inspiration to the Potter House. Um, I didn't have a. I didn't have. I didn't have doubts that he wouldn't have what it takes or have mm -hmm. what it took to get there. Um, I had doubts that I um, had what it took to get him there. To take him there. Yeah, I, I had. I had doubts in myself. Um, and 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 so that that forced me to work even harder. That forced me to work even harder. And uh, so that's I mean that was that's it. I mean for that guy he he lost some big fights, but he he won more than he you know he won some big fights. And so for us, man, I, I feel like um, you know we lost some in the ring, but but those losses taught us some things. And um, I'm not saying we're not beatable. Um, I just want you to feel. You like know, that's interesting. Not. That that is that you think will help molded molded you is to take those losses and to learn how to bounce back from it. Yes, I mean when when um, um, 
when you watch people show successful people I mean from um, Anthony Gray to Julie Cow to um, Jerry Presley you know these are those are guys um, I actually got a chance to see um, um, Suarez with uh, Paco I've actually seen them compete in the ring um, when you get a chance to see those guys get out there and compete in the ring Mo Barrow um, with their dog I mean they me and, and and I seen them win some big shows and I seen them lose some big shows their demeanor didn't change it, it didn't change it was like okay all right well I either messed up or didn't mess up or one of the best things I've ever heard from Anthony Gray he said man sometimes you you're gonna face a dog that just he just beat you that day you know you're gonna face a team you know a, a, a handler and a dog and they just they just they were the better they were the better team that day and they beat you and that was it it, it wasn't that you did anything wrong um, um, it wasn't that you could have done anything better um, Derek Dennis told me that he said you know sometimes you know it's not it's not that it's not room you can't always say well what could I what could I have done better was nothing you could have done better you know he was just the better dog that day and so you know I, I, I take those lessons but when you can see people like that that are that have been that successful um, in the game um, and, and competing and in the show ring um, you know you can't do anything but learn from it and take their advice because they're still winning you know they're still winning um, uh, I probably say one of the biggest um, influences for me um, and teaching me um, and being meticulous as far as detail is uh, Miss Kathy Lang Russell. Um, I met her at an at a ABKC show and um, and you know in a sense she took me under her wing and, and, and taught me some things that that a book couldn't teach me. You know she also did give me some books to read so that I could learn in more detail but um, all of those details she taught me and uh, and I couldn't be, you know, uh, more thankful, you know, that I've been able to learn from these people, um, either by watching them or them taking the time to pull me to the side and teach me. So, yeah. Hey man, I, I, I gotta say, man, I really appreciate you uh, opening up your home today. Yes, sir. Here at the Potter's house, and uh, getting a chance for the people to get to know you better, man, and. Why they should get a quality dog from you, man? Um, man, I, I appreciate you coming, and um, um, I appreciate you 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 having me. You know, I I, I know you are your, you are your own person. You are your own brand. But um, I was telling my I was telling my mom. Um, I said, Mom, this guy's like the the Oprah Winfrey of the dog world. <laughs> you know, um, you know when when he say he want to come and and do an interview. You know, it's uh, it's major for me. You know, um, having watched your videos um, prior to ever uh, meeting you, and having watched um, your um, your interviews um, prior to ever um, getting the opportunity to get in front of your camera, um, and then you know, over a period of years, um, actually doing enough and uh, and made a, enough of a name for myself to uh, to be to be given and presented with that opportunity um, man I'm I'm grateful thankful um, so I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that 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 you chose me so yeah, man, like, like I said man I really appreciate your, your time today man I'm, I'm looking forward to that day when I when I can say uh, judge McClenny man <laughs> yes sir I, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for that man I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for that day man because yes, we sir. need more quality people mm -hmm. Who, who really care about the breed out there representing as a judge? Yes, sir. Um, I would say one day. I mean, one day. Um, uh, the door is open, and um, and I, I think it's definitely going to happen. And uh, um, I'll probably say, like, one of my biggest mentors, Miss uh, Miss Kathy Lang Russell, she, her, her only uh, request from me was to um, pay it forward. You know, pay it forward. Um, 
the information was given to her and she paid it for it by you know passing it on to others um, and so um, if I'm doing it as a handler if I'm doing it as a breeder um, uh, or maybe in the future if I'm doing it as a judge you know um, I'm definitely gonna always take her advice and pay it forward so let's see All right thank you for your time today we have Antonio McClenny on the Potter House if they would need to get in contact with you how can they do it um, they can uh, look me up on uh, Facebook, it's uh, Antonio McClenny, or um, Instagram is uh, TPH underscore bullies. Um, that's it. That's it. I'm an I'm a easy guy to find. Easy guy to find. You can Google my name. I'm pretty sure you can find me. The real Rick Ross. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, we out. Right here, we just have some of the real Rick Ross awards right here from different registries. He won these this, this past weekend. This past weekend, right here. Yeah. So what's 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 one of the ones you most proud of? Um, I got this one. I got this made from um, um he did uh, a photo shoot for a model out of California, and so that was a a paid job, and they came and um, you know they needed a a bully. And he was the, the bully that they chose to use. And um, so very happy about that. And then um, um, the Atomic Dog, uh, Atomic Dog Super Bully Show. It was an ABKC show. Oh, um, Atomic Dog. That was, um, that was a big one. That was a big one because I don't think, um, I don't think anybody ever expected uh, an XL to, uh, to win. Um, to win at that show, and um, uh, my first CBR show that I won, um, you know, these were the, this was his best in show, and um, and then my first RKC, my first RKC best in show, I want to say it was this one right here, and so, um, very, very proud of those. Um, this one. That's that third oh, place yeah. ribbon you was talking yeah, about right there. The, that was the third place one. So That's that third um, place he was talking about. So um, definitely happy about that. Definitely happy about that. But um, happy about all of the accomplish all of his his accomplishments. Uh, I think. Uh, um, I wish I actually could have brought them all down. I got boxes of them up there, some ribbons and trophies. But um, but just happy, happy that. Um, you know, just always remembering that the our ultimate goal was just to win one gold ribbon, and uh, and now I got yeah, more. Look at you now. Yeah, I just I ran out of room, so so it's it's a good uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So man, once again, thank you for inviting me to your home, Antonio McClendon with the real Rick Ross, the Powder House. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right.